Yeah, you know when you see me, you see good news, inspiration, celebration of some sort. And you made it through, I made it through, we are living life purposefully. You know, I read something this morning that said that a gem cannot be polished without friction, nor a man be perfected without trials. Ah, I need a hand for that. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Make some noise. You know, that is why I always tell myself, I need to shift change my perspective how i see and view the trials that come into my life because they only come to make me stronger they come to make me bigger to, to 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 fight and be that champion that i need to do for my purpose now today i'm really excited because i have two individuals whom i've known for a very long time <laughs> hey. my parents knew your parents all of that and um, it's so good to have you guys now i have uh, Lance Roder here with me. Make some noise! Oh, cheers for that. Cheers, cheers. <laughs> Come on, Denise. Jacobs! We're having a ball uh, in the studio. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And so um, I would like to introduce you guys, but I would maybe not say the proper things that I should. So, won't you introduce yourself? Who is Lance Roder? Oh, come on now. Who's Lance Roder? <laughs> Lance Roder is a gym. Come on. Whoa! Come on. <laughs> a gym. Friction, my man. A person get friction, then you get gym, then you get Lance in the middle. Oh, come on. <laughs> my name is Lance Roder. I am a pastor's kid. I am all the way from retreat. I have got a sister and I've got a dog named Max. Right. Which makes us three. Oh, and your sister's name is Maxine. No. <laughs> <laughs> Whew, my sister's name is Jamie Lee Roder. Jamie. <laughs> and I've got a beautiful mother, Apostle Virginia Roder, and yeah. a handsome father, Apostle Vincent Roder. And I'm all the way from the retreat. Yeah. You know, that's about like... Um, Cape Town. Yes, yeah. You know, I mean, if you leave here, you drive like two days to go to retreat. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. Yeah, you know, and um, I'm so glad to be here. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to be here. You know, you know with Deborah Pearl. I can Pearl. just say to you that your, your parents, eh? Not that I want to, you know, say how old I am. But, um, you know, I look good for my age. Come on. Um, but your parents were not married yet. Then I was young and I would see them. And today they married for how long now? Sure, that's that. You know, that's because actually, yes, because this lockdown actually made me confused because uh, this lockdown actually made the years longer. Yeah. <laughs> so it feels like an so extra now it's 10 years. years. So it feels like, a, you know, um, you know maybe they married, married 40 years. Yes. Long. Yes, no, 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 so long. So, you know. Denise, so. would you, Jacobs? Do you want to introduce yourself? Um, my name is Denise Jacobs, as you all know, also known as Denali. Okay. Whoa. Um, <laughs> Whoa. Denali. Um, I can't name my, my siblings because there's a long list. We are six children, two sets of twins. I've got a twin brother um, named Daniel. Love you, Daniel. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, I grew up in, in Cape Town. Um, I grew up in Grossy Park, actually. And then we moved to Bayview. Can I just say um, how long we know you guys for? I mean, we also like very long kids, you know, stuff like that. So um, I think I know you guys all my life. You guys, <laughs> was still, your mother was still pregnant with you and, and, and Daniel. Yes. And you were living in Atri. Yes, right? that time. But we've known you guys before that. That's yes. how long. Similar backgrounds. Wow. Lots of kids. Yeah. Always in church. Trying to do the right there thing. There we go. Emphasis on trying Tr to do the very right thing. Emphasis on a lot of kids because yeah. that time we wasn't teens. <laughs> so I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. I remember you the know, days when you guys made us Easter eggs on Easter. Yeah. You guys used to yes. make us Easter eggs. Yes. Easter eggs. yes. yes. <laughs> with, a, with that fake chocolate. <laughs> but you ate it. Yes, we loved it. Yeah, exactly. So, so I've got a question. Where was I that time? Listen, you were after the bear. <laughs> sorry, sorry. So I was behind the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Behind the mountain. <laughs> 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 you are also a drummer. Yes. You play in church. Who else do you play for? I am um, currently playing for Emo Adams for the last seven years. Mm -hmm. um, Emo Adams and the Take Note Band. Yeah. Um, and I've, I've, I've been with them now for the last seven years. And yeah. I've been privileged to be working with a lot of artists you wow. know, that I've dreamt of working with. You know, and God is so good. You know, I mean, Absolutely, I'm. Absolutely, eh? Because when I put on the TV and I watch something and I and I say, oh, there's a lot. 
that's how it goes. Well, time to you for that. Thank you so much. All glory to God. I want to just talk about you, you individually have your stuff that you do and your trials that you had to overcome. You know? And then together you also had a traumatic experience. But you are in the process of writing a book called Pastor's Kid. Why did you choose yeah. that title? Do you know what I did? I think all of us sitting over here, we are pastor's kids. Mm. We will die a pastor's kid. Um, even if you want to run away from being a pastor's kid, it's in our blood. We will remain a pastor's kid. I mean, you are married today, Debbie, and you're still a pastor's kid. <laughs> um, you know, from my experience... My husband is also a pastor's kid. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's, so uh, you know, so I, I, I decided to, uh, to do this book, write this book from a pastor's kid's view. Wow. Because I, I do believe that a pastor's kid has got a unique story, mm -hmm. a unique story to share. I mean, if I should interview you, Debbie, on the Lance Road show, come on, mm. come on, on the Lance Road show. And I mean, and I've, you know, and I've asked you, okay, Debbie, so you know, how was your experience as a, you know, as a pastor's kid? You're going to tell me, Lance, I had to do my, my homework under the chairs, you know, and, and the people will, yeah, you know, and it goes on and on and on. People will worship and you had to do all of it. That's right. You know, so I think all of us has got a unique story yeah. to tell. And I think the world needs to hear what past the skids go through. Yes, yeah. because everything is all well at church. Hallelujah. But as soon as you get home, then it's like, okay, what happened now? Um, we were now in the spirit, but now we're no more in the spirit. Yeah. You know, because things get real at home. Yeah. You know, because I think people has got this of the pastor's kids um, or the pastor's family has got it all together. Mm. You know, but we are also human. Absolutely. We are human. Absolutely. You know, and you know, and from that um, um, view, I would you know, I would just like to share my story. No, no, no. Um Obviously, because it's busy, you're busy writing. Yes, yes, I'm so kind of What was the, like, the burning topic in the whole book that you really wanted to share? The burning topic would be, what are you without the church? Well, Who are you mm. without the church? Because if I look at myself, I, I, I grew up in church where I'm still playing, you know, all glory to God for that. But until I had to ask myself, Lance, now what, who are you mm -hmm. if the church is not there? Yeah. Because on a Monday night was band practice. On a Tuesday is, is Bible study. On a Wednesday um, is rehearsal again. On a Thursday is cell group. On a Friday is youth. On a Saturday is um, either a men's rally or a women's rally. On a Sunday morning is church. On a again. Come on now, come on now. So, so, I'm, so I had to ask myself, who are you without the church? Wow. That book, I cannot wait for. Right? That's going to be mind-blowing, Debbie. Sure. Really. Because I feel like um, it's untold stories. Oh, yes. That needs to be shared. And it needs to be real. There we go. There we go. Oh, yes. Get your cup of tea. Um, I would love to inspire all pastors kids out there mm. um, to speak up, yeah. share your experience, That's you know, because you do, you do have got, I mean, I, you know, me, myself as Lance, I think I've got a lot of experience and I am stepping out yeah. and I'm speaking about it, you know, to, right. to inspire all the pastors kids out there, whether you're young, whether you're old. You know, you, you, did you find for both of you that being uh, parents, uh, kids of parents who are leaders in the church and pastors, that now there's, there's this, you must be perfect, you must do everything. Oh, right. yes. Mm. Hey? Oh, yes. All eyes is on you. Yeah. 
Not that I went all haywire, but I find for me, with my sisters, they were probably a bit more calm, mm -hmm. shall I say. I was a bit more not so calm. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> that was the younger ones. Yes, the ones. Exactly. So when I see my chummies and my friends in the ball, hi, oh, yeah, how's it doing? Mm. Yeah, yeah. No, you must not calm down. And then I once thought, no, no one's going to keep me. There we go. Down there we go. Again. And the thing is, this was my parents. They allowed me actually to bring all kinds of friends home. You understand? Mm -hmm. So in church, if there was someone that looks a bit. Um, artistic and very expression of themselves and my wife is like, who's that now? It's probably one of Debbie's friends. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that, that's becoming different uh, um, shapes, forms and sizes. Oh yes, oh but yes. Yes. Oh yes. Denise, mm -hmm. listen now, you 2012, mm -hmm. some life-changing experience happened to you. What was that? I had seizures. So, um, yes, so I had my was first. Was that the first time? Yes, 2012. Was it 2012? Yes, yeah, 2012 was the first one I got. And then I think five years later, I got another one, which I had two and on that specific day. And that's where we realized something was wrong. And um, doctors couldn't figure out because I was like in my 20s, in my late, yeah. late early 20s, mid 20s basically. And then they couldn't figure out because normally if it's in your gene, you get it at a young age. Mm -hmm. But for me, it was like, they were like, something, something isn't right. And they wanted to do brain surgery and all those things. And I went for tests and stuff like that. And then still today, I'm on trial. I'm like, they can't figure out why am I getting it. This is like now again, three years later, they still haven't figured out. They still out. haven't figured out why am I getting it. So they can't say it's specific, it's epilepsy. And they can't say it's, it's something else. Yeah. But I mean, life has changed for me. I've never s looked at life How the same way. The thing is, um, I the second time when I got it, and at the one when I where I got it so severe, it's when serious. I yeah, that's when I had a shorter memory, and um, I had a personality change. Like that. <laughs> <People Like this. laughs> Lance was there like since this. day one. Yes, he was there when I had my first one. Lance was there. He actually saved me. Eh? <laughs> Superman. <laughs> Superman. He dived and saved me. You know, my name me. is yeah. Lance Rocky Rauda. <laughs> did, did I mention that you guys are uh, dating and you're in a relationship? I yes. Didn't say that. No, you didn't say that, Debbie, which I have a problem with. <laughs> 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 because I seen us drink no liquor tea and coffee no, you man, you man, proud no van us tea. I will not taste it. Well, let's just clarify. We're in a relationship, guys. So. Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. So, um, and then when I, the okay, so the personality change was basically, um, I can, okay, I'm gonna explain it to you from a doctor's point of view. Yeah. So my front lobe, you have your your brain is is it's divided into four. Yes. So my front lobe is basically your, the motor of you. It's basically your personality, That's your memory, and everything. And mine, due to the seizures that I had, mine had a, there was a defect that happened, and that's when I had the personality change or things out. I was just different. I had all this out anger. Of, yeah. wow. I was out of control, and luckily my Colleagues at work at the time, the company I worked for, they understood what was going on, so they had my back. And people were like asking, "What is wrong with the niece?" And then they were like, "No, she's fine, man. She's just going through a phase." So that was the thing. But I mean, it got much better. I learned to cope with it. I've learned how to deal with it. So, like, I can't stress you. Have to eat healthy. You have to at all times like be cautious. They told me wow. that I couldn't use stairs. I couldn't drive. I couldn't sleep a certain way. I can never be alone. So, how much you sleep? I have to sleep on my back actually. All the time? Yes, because if you have an episode and you sleep maybe on your stomach, you can like suffocate. That's right. And then I, I my shower, you can't, pop, you, like those things. So I do make a lot of changes, but in my mind, I was always like, I'm not going to change anything, man. I'm here for a purpose. I'm going to live my life and not let this keep me or yeah. hold me like from doing things and being me. So I had to learn to deal with it. But, but just on that, mm -hmm. uh, last how how you as you're in a relationship with yes. her? How did you experience her differently? What are things that were? Look, do you know, um, the niece is a very jolly person. Yeah. A jolly yeah, person, and a, then um, I mean, obviously, it it, it, it it wasn't nice, you know, for me to see uh, experience that um, because I mean, it's it's just not nice, you yeah. know. It, it broke my heart. I would be sad for days because I mean, I would I would be like God, but now. Can't I didn't rather get it 
you know, instead yeah. of uh, you, take, yeah. you know, because she's such a gentle soul. Although, Absolutely. although sometimes, well, ek, although, gentle. although sometimes, well, I will not be country set. Not for a buy one, get one free special, and more to pick you via. Because yes, like that, sometimes I rack it at the same price. Yes, for the same price, just a, a fun, just a quick special, yeah, quick special. But anyway, I, I mean, I love it too, but and I, um, uh, yeah, you know, so it wasn't. I mean, it, it really, it, it really broke my heart, and. And instead of being jolly, she would always be sad. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, you know, and I ask God, you know, just to give me the wisdom and the strength, you know, just to be there for her. So um, and I mean, she's, I mean, she is a, a superwoman. I'm, I'm so gem. proud of her. <laughs> You're the gem, yes. absolutely, but it came with friction, right? Eh? Yes, yes, polished. yes. <laughs> yes, yes. But now, the thing is, now, now, mm -hmm. You're still managing it? I'm managing it. I'm on medication for okay. it. Um, at the time, they put me on antidepression because um, the medication was so strong. I, I don't know if I mentioned to you yes, that I, I was really rushed I was rushed to hospital. I remember I was with Lance. Yeah. He played. The morning when I woke up, I had this rash on my hand, but it, was, it wasn't major. And then as the hours went on, it was getting bigger. This thing, rash is getting bigger, getting red, and it's like blisters coming out. And I told him, I feel fine. But the doctor told me, as soon as you get a rash, you must be rushed to your hospital because oh you can wow. die. Immediately, yeah. Then this one was panicking and we were rushed to your hospital. And um, luckily I got there in time because then I felt fine, but it was this rash and it was medication. It was too strong that they put wow. me on. That day I drove so fast, faster <laughs> than the airplane. Come on. Like you can like call, you can. you can call me. British Airways, you can call me, uh, you know, Kalulu. But I'm faster than him. <laughs> 220. I made it in time, he saved my life. He, you didn't even take note of the rash. He, he was the one who was more concerned. Said, the doctor said, yes. yes. Speak up to you, my man. <laughs> now, the thing is, this is why we're talking about this individually. They have experienced turmoil, right? But now, we're going to talk about that connected experience. This is good news with Deborah Paul. Keep watching. <laughs> We're back. Good news with Deborah Ooh. Paul. We're just having so much fun, guys. I read. I always have this saying about um, trials. That says trials are not made. To make us fail. Oh yes, yes. come on. But said to see how far you can fly. True. Woo! Woo! The two of you have really you you flown. Yes, yeah. Some some heights. Eh? Yeah, Although the, the aeroplane dropped many times, but <laughs> you, um, kept you kept flying. Yes, we kept flying. <laughs> <laughs> you ran out of fuel. You know <laughs> that. Above. Oh yes, come, come on. on. We eagles today. Yes. So um, I want to speak about the individual you went through your trauma, but and trial, but now together. You went through a very traumatic accident. Let me in on that. I think I will. That was 2018. I'm, yes. I'm going to let Denise yeah. explain that because she remembers everything. I wow, don't remember. Yeah. With my memory, I've got a good memory. This oh brain yes. is still That's functioning. Right. Come on. <laughs> through it all. Through it all. And you finished your studies? And yes. yes. That all of that. Wow. Yes. Gosh. <laughs> okay, so on the 12th of October, you wake up as a normal working day for everybody, normal day. Um, the evening, it was the 9th was my mommy's birthday. So the 12th was on a Friday and we decided we're going to have a small celebration with my mom. And that was at my sister's place in Wiesenburg. Yeah. So it was myself, Lance, my mom and my dad and my two sisters. It was just us. And then George, we left there about after 9. After just nine, after yeah. 9, like early hours of the Friday evening. We drove from Bayview, drove from Musenberg to Bayview because we drove behind my parents. Yeah. So my son and Lance was driving behind my parents. And then we were still talking about the next day, what we're going to do and the plans and everything. Uh, the next day, I asked her if she can drop me at the airport because I had a, uh, a 6.30 flight. Yes, the she morning. Had she had <laughs> She's dropping that. So... <laughs> So we were talking about that and where I'm in, what I'm going to do for this, for the Saturday and everything. Yeah. And then while we're driving, we just see this lady. She hit, she drove it to my parents. She drove them off the road. Like, get on. Yes, get like on. on this, yeah. And she caught him on the side because my dad swerved. And then we were like so shocked. We just kept quiet. And then she came for us. She was basically driving in our lane and she came for us. Lance tried to swerve out of the way, but she came for us. Wow. And she drove into us, head on. At the speed of like Those 220. Speaks. 
look horrific. Nobody should have survived. Eh? Yes, that is so true. So that is what the doctor said. Such a testimony. And then? Then, like, there was this few seconds where everything was just, it just happened so fast. I remember I still took a deep breath because I told myself, it's coming, I took a deep breath, which was my slice, I hadn't to do that <laughs> because when I came out of it, I couldn't breathe. And Lance was in so much pain because I looked over to Lance and then Lance was like in a world of his own. Normally Lance would ask, are you all right? Lance didn't do that and I knew something was not right. And you know, when I came out of the first words that came out, I will never forget that. I said the blood of Jesus the whole time. I just keep on saying because I couldn't breathe and I was like the blood of Jesus. And that calmness just came over me. And I took control and Lance was so in a state, he was like in so much pain because he was keep on saying my legs, my legs. Whoa. And I couldn't move his legs. And then I got out of the car, God knows how I got out of that car, I tried to, to go, go around and try to help Lance. And that's the time my dad came and I collapsed because I lost too much blood. And then... Where did you lose, lose the blood? From? I had an open <coughs> glove. So the open glove is like, for instance, where there's so much pressure, like the car, it was so, it was so hard, the and impact. That yes, that like my, le my leg, it burst open. What? Yes. Everything inside my leg was out. That's what happened. And that's why I said, I don't know how I got out of the car to walk, to around. walk around. Yes. Again. And I didn't realize I had an injury that time because yeah. I felt nothing. Sure. The blood of Jesus. I was calm. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He couldn't move. He couldn't move. He was in pain because his legs. Yeah, the, I, I remember waking up and the first thing that hit my Where mind. Where did you wake up? Still uh, yeah, on the, the, on the scene. Yeah. So I woke up and I, and I could hear the, um, the wind blowing mm. and I could hear the sea and I. You know, for a moment, I couldn't believe what has happened because I'm sitting over there and my mind is telling me, you need to be on a flight tomorrow morning. How are you going to tell Emo oh. that you cannot oh, you, go to Joburg you, you tomorrow more morning? About that. My mind is telling me, I must go work tomorrow morning. But when I saw that uh, half of the engine, the dashboard is on my legs mm. and I can't move, I realized, okay. You're a drama. And yes. I'm a drummer. You need your legs. There we go. And I remember Ooh. looking down and my legs were like like jelly, loose. And then and then it hit me. Hey. And something was wrong. And then I was then I was out of the of the of the pain. Mm. And then and then I remember the guys, the uh, the paramedics said, Okay, Mr. Oda, this is going to hurt, you know, but we must do this. And they cut me out of the car. And I remember they pulled me out and I screamed, my legs, my legs, my legs, my legs. And I woke up in the ambulance. And the first thing I asked the paramedic, I asked him, sir, is my legs broken? And he told me, Mr. Mr. Oda, both your legs is broken. Now, as a drama. What happened up here in your head? At first, I thought it was it was a dream, uh, but then it hit me like this: Lance, you were in a in a serious car accident, and then I was out of it again because of the pain, you know. And I remember I could feel my femur bone; it was literally like this. In, in, you know, instead of this, it, it was like this. And the guy told me, "Hey, Mr. Roder, you are in a bad state." And then again, I was out of it, and then I woke up in hospital and um, that was in the early hours of the morning and mm -hmm. now you must know this uh, Debbie I'm laying in the ambulance and I'm thinking my sister's alone at home my parents is in Mossel Bay you know for the whole week oh gosh. she's alone at home where is she I wonder mm -hmm. if she's all right or whatever and that night my father drove probably two and a half to three hours out of Mossel Bay and it takes you four to five, four and a half mm. hours, I know. He says, <laughs> he, he drove 180 to 200 around the bends. Because in his mind it was, Lance and Denise was in a serious car accident. And now the flip side is, is this, Debbie. The people called him to say it and, and said that it doesn't look like Lance is going to make oh. it. Yes, the worst and ever. two hours still to drive. Yes. Like, how do you call... Was call my dad and say um, it doesn't look, you know, yes, like your son is going to is going to make it. Um, and then and then I remember I woke up and I saw okay, but the other and and they stood in front of me. And then again I was I was knocked out of the pain, 
And then the morning I woke up, I woke up, the doctor came to visit me around about 7 o'clock. And then I, I was thinking, now where's Denise? Because the last time I was with Denise. Exactly. So where's Denise? Anyway, so now I don't have my phone with me. I have nothing. And now I'm, I'm laying in the wood and I'm thinking, I missed my flight. It took a whole few hours to think where I was. <laughs> <laughs> because I was, I was... I was so in pain. I was. I was That's out the of thing. A, it was not I like was, Lawrence. And where were you? I was in a different hospital. I was in Vincent Pilati. He was How in long were you in I was for about three weeks in hospital. And you? I was about a week in hospital. The first week. The greatest lesson you've learned out of this. Come on, jo, jo, Grace. Jo. God's grace. Never idolize things. And your own talent. There we go. Because on the day I had my car for a year, God removed it. Why? Because you idolized it. Exactly. Nobody could look at the at the age of I think I was twenty six, eh? At the age of twenty six, I've I've been playing on the biggest stages. I bought I myself know. a BMW. Twenty fourteen three one six F thirty. Exactly. Yeah. But tell me something quickly. What do you want to say to someone out there? Okay, uh, Denise, go for it. What I've learned slow pro progress is at least progress. No progress. At le Sorry, I need to do this thing over. <laughs> this thing. Okay, just go. Slow progress is better than no progress. And that's what I've learned in life. Oh, Never idolize things. Mm -hmm. Never rush the process. Yeah. Complete your process. Sure. Because I had to complete my process. I had to learn how to walk again. L I had to I learn yeah. how to walk again. A guy that could walk for how many years, you know, I could play and whatever, and here, God just stopped the bus, like, whoa. And here you back playing? Oh, glory you to God. doing your own thing? Mm -hmm. Come on. You guys grace, 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 grace. higher and higher. Eagles, so like an eagle. Oh, yes. This is Indeed. This with Deborah Paul. Guys, please, man, just know, whatever trial you're going through, you're going higher. Where can we find you? Um, Facebook, Instagram, on Facebook is Denise Jacobs, uh, in brackets, Denali, D-A-N-E-L-I. And on Instagram, is ni at Nisi, um, at Nisi 10, so it's N-E-E-C-E-E-10. -E -E you can find me in the road, at the shop, at McDonald's, <laughs> um, at the fisheries, <laughs> by the Pro. You can find me yeah, um, on Facebook, on Instagram, <laughs> Lance Rauder. You can find me drinking tea. Boom, boom. But today you found the right on goodness of the Oh, yes, we are. Yes. Come on. <laughs>